Welcome back to the channel everybody. I'm Trevor with Maker Experiment and today I'm going to be talking about maximizing your production and your cost with how much you can make, the price is going to cost you to do it, things like that. So let's get started. You may be wondering what I mean by maximizing your production. And thankfully, today I have an example to go through. This example is going to walk through specifically making magnets. So I got an order for 200 magnets. And magnets are one of those items that if you make one of something and you're selling one of it and it's a one-off custom piece, say somebody's logo as a magnet, it's going to cost a lot of money for them to buy just one. And the reason for that is the time you're going to spend in design and setup, making the magnet and everything else. Granted, you could do it really cheap if you wanted to. I wouldn't suggest it. I would actually charge what you feel you are worth. Never try to undersell yourself. Never try to compete with other people on price because no matter what, somebody will always do it cheaper. The difference is you can do it better. Now, what I mean by that is your knowledge of design, your experience using it, everything like that plays into your cost. So I've been using lasers for seven years. I've been making magnets for probably five years and I've used a lot of different materials. Now that gives me the ability to make a, in my opinion, better product than somebody that's only been using a laser for say a month or two months, even a year just because I've done a lot with them and it helps me get the best results that I can. I'm not gonna say that I'm the best at every product out there, but the products that I do, I feel I am one of the best that makes them. And that's how you should all feel. No matter what you make, if you're making it and selling it, you need to believe that you are one of the best makers of that product. And this needs to translate into your price. You can't be feeling that you're the best maker of one of the products and then charge 25 cents. It just doesn't make sense. You need to value yourself and your time and your work. So that's what I'm gonna walk through today. So in this order, I am using this laser mag material from Johnson Plastics. I'll put a link in the description below for what it is. This material alone is not cheap. I think it's about $25 a sheet. And by the time you ship one sheet, it's like $35 a sheet. The material cost is also something that plays into your quantity and your cost. So in this example, because I'm making 200 magnets, I ordered six sheets of material. And with that, my shipping for six sheets was only $2 more than the shipping for one sheet. So automatically making one magnet is going to be more expensive than if somebody said, hey, I wanna buy 200, the price per magnet is going to be a lot less, as well as the machine time. First, I'm going to show you what the design is. It's actually some magnets for wall control. I'm going to machine one to show you how long it takes to do one magnet by itself. Then I'm going to machine an entire sheet where I can make 40 out of one sheet. And I will give you the machine times for that, how long it takes per magnet to do it, and how that can play into your cost. So first up, is the design, so let me show you what that looks like. Here I have my general design. I have the filled in black for what is going to be engraved, and then I have a border for the exterior of the magnet that is going to be a die cut shape to match the logo. This is just one single magnet. Now to maximize this sheet of material, I actually laid out a full sheet and nested them myself you'll see that I was able to get 10 magnets per row and a total of four rows to give me a total of 40 magnets per sheet. By filling the sheet as much as I can with 40 magnets, I'm able to use five total sheets of material, which means that that extra sixth sheet that I ordered is a spare sheet in case there are mistakes or I can use it for a different project. By nesting these as closely as I can together, I am maximizing as much material as I can and reducing the cost as much as possible per magnet. Now that you've seen the design, let's go ahead and machine one. We'll look at how long that took 
and then we'll machine the entire sheets and see how long that takes. Let's fire up the Fusion Edge and get started. The single magnet just finished machining. So over here in the machine up in that corner, it did cut out already. So it's by itself. Here's what it looks like. It took two minutes and nine seconds. So it took two minutes and nine seconds to do one if you're machining it one at a time. Now I'm going to run the full table with all of them, which will be 40 magnets in total and then I'll let you know how long that took, and then we will be doing some math. After the 40 machine out, I will break it down into how long it took per magnet, and then show you what that relates to for your cost. I just finished machining a full sheet of magnets. I can actually fit about 40 of this design on one sheet. And the machining times are pretty drastic per magnet. So if you recall for one magnet, it took two minutes and nine seconds to machine. Now, when I do all 40, the whole bed at one time, the machine has the time to ramp up speed across the whole table. With that in mind, it took 44.78 seconds per magnet. So if you're machining the whole bed, you can be over twice as productive than if you were doing a single magnet. So when you're laying out your projects, if you have a lot to do, it's better if you do the full table because you can get the full run of the table. This also means that your machine needs to be reliable enough that you can do the whole bed without any issues. In my case, that's not a problem. I've been doing it for a while and I haven't had any issues doing that. So what does this mean when it comes to your costs and everything associated for machining? If you're doing one magnet, it's gonna cost you more to do that one magnet than if you're doing 40 magnets and the cost to do one magnet in that bunch of 40, which is why bulk orders usually get a discount versus a single one-off item. Now, in this case, you'd have to add up your machine time, your design time, and everything else. And if you're doing a quantity, it's always cheaper for your price. So if you're doing a design, say you charge $50 to do the design, if you're doing it for one magnet, $50 is a ton of money. However, if you're doing $50 for the design and you're doing 200 magnets, your cost is so much lower and it can be incorporated into what you're doing. This is why lately I've been trying to do more bulk orders and take on less one-off orders just because it's a lot of time and effort and you don't typically get the return on your investment, meaning you don't typically get paid as much for your time as you do with your bulk orders. When you're planning out your design and your machining, it's important to take these things into mind. Even for my flask example from a past video, if I machined one flask, it may take three to four minutes. But when I did six at a time, that machining time went down to maybe one to two minutes per flask. This is where the importance of jigs comes in and laying out to maximize your material and things like that. So when you're doing your design, it's important to think about how you want to lay everything out for the machining time. And you can even test this on the newer machine where you can get a prediction of how long it's going to take you to machine everything. Therefore, you can lay out different patterns and test different things to see how long it's going to take before you ever run the job. Being able to maximize your production and your machine time is going to help you put more items through the machine, create more jobs, 
be able to take on more orders and honestly not deal with the headache of a one-off single design. If you want to do a one-off single design, I would recommend doing it on something bigger like a sign or something that usually costs more money. Doing something like one magnet or one ornament or one keychain of a completely unique and custom design is just not worth the amount of time and effort it's going to take because you're not going to get paid the amount of money that it should to give you that return on your investment. So in this project, I'm actually using laser mag material that is from Johnson Plastics. I will put a link in the description below to the material that I'm using, as well as a discount code where you can get 10% off. Hopefully this video has been helpful. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so that you know when I release new videos. And be sure to check out my Instagram at Maker Experiment where I share tips and tricks along the way. I wanna thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I'll see you in the next one.